OK, we move now on to the very last part, part D. So we'll just move that up and start D then. Now, for part D, we've got to find the length PQ, where Q is the point where this normal uh, cuts the x-axis. So when any graph crosses the x-axis, we always set y equal to zero. So just going to put then that since 3y equals x plus 20, let's make that plus a bit better, okay there we go, since 3y equals x plus 20, I'm going to say that when y equals zero, what we have is that zero equals x plus 20. So therefore, if we subtract 20 from both sides, we're left with x equaling minus 20. So that means that therefore q has the coordinates, uh, the x value is minus 20 and the y value is 0. So now we've got to find the length of pq. What I want to do is just draw a little sketch of what's going on over on the right here. So let's just draw our axes. Okay, it's not going to be to scale, it's just to give us an idea. Okay, so we have the point Q at minus 20, 0. So let's pretend that Q is over here. Uh, Q is minus 20, 0. And then the point P is at 4, 8. So that's going to obviously be 4 across here and 8 units up. So as I say, it's not drawn to scale, but it just gives us a reasonable idea of where things are. So that's 4, 8. Okay? And what we're trying to do then is find the distance from P to Q across here. And in order to do that, going to think of this as a triangle, a right angle triangle. Let's just draw that in across there, from there, and then up to there. Okay? So there's my right angle triangle and we're just going to use Pythagoras' theorem to get the length PQ. So therefore, PQ will equal the square root okay, of the difference between the x coordinates, that will give us that length. So the difference between them will be 4 minus minus 20. So that's telling me that comes to 24. That's the length across here. And I need to square that side and add it to the difference in the y coordinates, which, if I look at this, it's 8 take away 0, which is clearly 8, and that will be squared. So that height up there is 8 units. So we'll just draw that root right the way across the top there. Okay, so this comes then to the square root of 24 squared plus 8 squared. So we'll put that in brackets like that. So we're square rooting the whole lot. Okay, so 24 squared. You might want to do this on the side here. If you can't do it in your head, we're not allowed a calculator on this paper. So 24 times 24. Let's just bring that up a little bit more. 24 times 24. Let's have a look, see what that is. Okay. 4, 4, 16, carry 1, 4, 2, 0, 8, and the 1 is 9. Put a naught down, 2, 4, 0, 8, 2, 2, 0, 4. Total that up, 6, 9, and 8, 17, carry the 1, and 4, and 1 is 5. 576 then. So I've got 576 plus 64, that comes to 640. So we've got the square root of 640. We're asked to give it in a simplified third form. So it's suggesting that this is going to break down. So I look at this and I think, ah, oh, right, 64 is a square number. That goes into that. It's a factor of that. So I can think of this as the square root then of 64 times 10 and that is exactly the same as square rooting 64 multiplied by the square root of 10. And the square root of 64 is 8 so we have 8 
root 10. There you go. The answer to part D then. So, hope you got that right. And if you found difficulty, hopefully you understand how it's done now.